In this video, I'll show you three steps to make a simple linear regression model in Excel. And by the end of the video, you learn how to analyze the model that you just created using statistics terminology. So make sure to stick around for that. The data set that I'll use in this video is from Kaggle. And it basically, it's a data set on the, the house prices in the King County area, which is basically Seattle area. And I'll provide the link in the description below so you, you could follow along if you want. All right, so step one in creating our model is to come up with the statistical questions. So for this video, my statistical question is going to be, what is the relationship between the square feet in the living room and the house price in the King County area? So this means that my variables are going to be the square feet and the house price. And you could choose whatever variables you want to do, but you need to make sure they're continuous variables. Now we need to know what our independent variable, which is on the X axis and our dependent variable, which is on the Y axis are. So in this example, it makes sense for me to have the house price as a dependent variable because we're assuming that the number of square feet is going to affect what the price is. So now that we came up with our statistical questions, we can move on to step two now, which is to select the two columns that we want in Excel. So to show you how to do this, I'm gonna jump over to my screen. Over in Excel, you have to select the second cell in the column with all the square feet, which is column T. So if you do that, then you have to do Control Shift down, and that's gonna select all the values in that column. And we're gonna repeat the same thing for the other column with all the prices, and that's column C. So we have to hold down the Control key, and then select the second cell again, and do control shift down. All right, so step three is to create our scatter plot. And Excel makes it really easy to do it. Go to insert and then click on this button over here. If you do that, it's gonna open a, a menu and then click on the first option. And this is gonna show you a nice scatter plot. But there's actually a problem with our graph. If you look at the axes, they're in the wrong order. We want the prices to be the dependent variable, not the independent variable. So to fix this problem, you have to right click the graph and then click on select data. And this is gonna open a new window. And from here, you click edit. And it's gonna show you two boxes, the X values and the Y values. And right now it says that the X values are from our C column, but that's not right. We want the X values to be from the T column, which is the square feet. So I'm gonna click on this button over here, and then I'm gonna get rid of everything. And then I'm gonna select on cell T2, and then do Control Shift down. And then click on this button. Now we basically do the same thing, but this time for the Y values. So you click on this button, and then get rid of everything. And this time we want the C column because we want the prices to be on the Y axis. So do control shift down and then click on this button. And if you click on OK, then if we look at our graph again, it looks a lot better now because the square fee is on the X axis and all the prices are on our Y axis, which is what we want. The scatter plot looks better now, but I want to add titles to the axes to make it a bit more descriptive. It's pretty easy to do that. We just click on the plus sign on the right hand corner and then select axis titles. And this is gonna show you the default titles for the X and the Y axis. So you can just edit it from there. To make this a linear regression model, we have to add a trend line. And all you gotta do is click on the graph again, click on the plus sign and then select trend line. This is gonna show you a trend line and right now it's pretty hard to see because there's so many data points covering it. So I'm gonna click somewhere close to the line and then if I keep clicking, then it's gonna open this new pane on the right hand side and you could change the color. So I'm gonna go to here, this button, and then there's gonna be a color option. And right now it's set to blue, which is the same color as the data point. And I don't want that. So I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna change it to orange and it's gonna ask me that complex formatting is applied to selected chart. And I'm just gonna say yes. And if you take a look at that, you can see the see the graph or see the line of best fit more clearly. Technically we're done here, but I wanna do one more thing. I wanna analyze what our linear regression model tells us. So in the format trend line window, click on the button that looks like a bar graph and then all the way near the bottom, select the display equation on chart and the R squared value. And these two things are gonna give us some useful information on our model. So if I close that window, 
then you can see over here that it shows us the equation and the r squared value and now we're going to analyze it so if you look at the equation over here you can see that there's a positive slope and if you look at the r squared value over here if you take the square root of that you get your r value which is over here and the r value tells you the strength of the relationship between the two variables in the model so in this case the r squared value was 0.3427 which if you take the square root of that you get approximately 0.59 and so this r value tells you that there's a moderately strong positive relationship between the two variables in the model which is the square feet in the living room and the house prices in the king county area so yeah that's all i got for this video hopefully you found it helpful and if you want to see me do more cool things inside of Excel similar to this. Make sure to smash that subscribe button, stay up to date with my content. And if you wanna see me do a full project walkthrough in Excel, check out this video over here. It's gonna, it's around 10 minutes long and I'm gonna be walking through the uses of VBA inside of Excel, which is really useful for automating things. And so yeah, thanks for watching. See you in another video.